County Extension Agent and Blueberry Grower in Benton County, Arkansas. We sit in the northwest corner of the state, an area that once grew blueberries commercially and shipped all over the country. But as of the last 20 years or so, the industry has been focused on pick your own and local sales with farms averaging five acres or less. I'm going to talk about weed control in the blueberry field and I've leaned on Dr. Zarnata from UGA so we can put this in perspective for both small and large scale farms. It is important to take a holistic approach in weed prevention and not rely on just one method of control. Blueberries are shallow rooted and don't form the mycorrhizal networks like other crops so can easily be put under stress and fail to thrive when weeds are present. There are multiple weed control strategies, but I'm going to focus on pre-plant, physical barriers, and chemical control. Weed control really needs to start well in advance of planting and recommend growers start at least a year in advance, especially if perennial and woody plants are present. Early cultivation is important as it helps to reduce some annual weeds as well as incorporate amendments such as pine bark or lower the pH with sulfur if necessary. Consider using a systemic herbicide like glyphosate or triclopyr to eliminate some of the harder to kill weeds. This may take multiple applications for complete control. Fall application can be most effective as the perennials will take the chemical to their roots more readily. Even if a grower wants to go organic with the fruit, a pre-plant application of herbicide could be used and allow for that three-year transition to organic before the crop comes off. Physical barriers are often employed on the blueberry farm and can have additional benefits other than just preventing weeds. Plastic mulches like those used in vegetable fields are sometimes used and provide excellent weed control for that crucial first year. Plastic mulch is inexpensive and easy to put out with a mulch layer. Additionally, the white on black plastic could be used to keep the root zone cooler. This type of mulch would deteriorate quickly compared to other options and would likely require a subsequent application of, of organic mulch. Landscape fabric is more popular for the reason that it holds up better and can provide excellent control for 10 plus years before it starts to deteriorate. Landscape fabric is more expensive with a 300 foot by 4 foot roll costing just over $50. Landscape fabric can also be easily applied with a mulch layer as seen in this picture. Another thing I like about landscape fabric is it can easily be pinned down with sod staples if wind gets under it. Organic mulches that are popular include sawdust, wood chips, or pine bark. What you choose is largely dependent on what is available or what is considered a byproduct in your area. Around here there are pallet mills that are willing to give their sawdust away and you just have to pay for someone to haul it. Wood chips can be easy to get with many farms allowing tree services to dump on their farm. Just be careful on what you are getting as the consistency can be variable and may contain black walnut which could be hard on the blueberry bushes. Pine bark is great but at least up here it is not readily available and can be expensive. Pine bark is a great medium for blueberries and is often incorporated pre-plant. Organic mulches can also be easily applied with the right equipment but may cost several thousands of dollars. On a small scale I have seen manure spreaders modified which can be inexpensive and much easier than putting it out by hand. Oftentimes Organic and synthetic mulches are used in conjunction with one another and can provide nearly complete control. Over time, organic matter in the bed can break down and cause the bed to sink. At this point, consider adding organic matter periodically to keep the percent in the soil high. This also helps to cool the soil and promote new feeder root growth. This may require complete removal of the synthetic mulch or just splitting it down the middle. 
Physical removal of weeds is not usually a great option for the blueberry field, as it is often expensive in the case of hand removal, but could damage the shallow roots of the blueberries in the case of mechanical cultivation. Going through the field and removing weeds by hand may still be necessary, especially to keep escaped weeds from going to seed. As seen in this picture, the organic farm here has gone to great lengths to minimize weeds, but allowing for organic amendments and fertilizers to still be added by folding apart the two strips of landscape fabric. Chemical control should be considered your last defense and in conjunction with good cultural practices. These products can be safely used when applied properly and according to the label. Herbicides can save hours of labor and can be easy to use and relatively inexpensive when compared to the other control methods. Two categories of herbicides are pre and post emergent. Pre emergent should be applied to bare or mulch soils before seeds germinate. Pre emergents need incorporation into the soil, which is usually by rainfall or irrigation. Pre emergent herbicides are typically effective for two to four months. Post emergent herbicides, on the other hand, are applied after the weed seed has germinated and need a certain period of dry to be effective and rain fast. This category has both non selective, such as Roundup, and selective such as Select Max types of herbicide. The Southeast Regional Blueberry Integrated Management Guide is a tremendous resource for growers and agents, especially in the Southeast. Updated yearly, this guide covers not only weed control, but insect and disease, as well as many best management practices. This guide can be easily found at smallfruits.org. In this guide, you will find recommendations for pre-plant site preparation as well as after planting. This easy to read table not only lists the recommended product, but the amount to use per acre, crop restrictions, re-entry interval, and comments such as avoiding crop injury. This section of the guide walks us through a typical year in weed management based on the planting year. Note that over time, the active ingredients and modes of action of the pre-emergent herbicides changes so that good control is maintained. Post-emergent herbicides are generally used as needed and tank mixed with the pre-emergent herbicide. Another section of the guide lists common weed species and the effects of labeled blueberry herbicides on those weeds. Response is categorized as excellent, good, fair, poor, or not recommended. Note that selective post-emergent herbicides like POST and Clethodum are only effective on grasses, while non-selective herbicides like glyphosate and paraquat can be used on both broadleaf and grass weeds. Just remember that blueberries are a broadleaf plant and care must be taken when using these non-selective herbicides. Herbicide damage is likely to occur if certain non-selective herbicides come in contact with leaves, stems, or roots of the blueberry plant. Certain selective and pre-emergent herbicides can also affect the blueberry plant during certain times of the year or under specific conditions. Certified organic options are available but generally only have contact effects and are not considered systemic. Strong vinegar solutions are the most commonly used, but newer products are starting to appear on the market. The effectiveness and long-term effects of these products are likely unknown and cultural practices are likely to be a better option in organic fields. Different parts of the Southeast treat row middles differently. Some prefer to keep middles weed and grass free, while others maintain a grass strip between rows. This grass strip can reduce erosion or offer cleaner conditions for pickers. On the other hand, the grass strip needs to be maintained. One way to do this is through chemical mowing. Perennial grasses, such as Bermuda grass, 
can be treated with a diluted rate of glyphosate listed here to reduce growth and subsequently the number of times the grass would need to be mowed. I have also done this with Select Max with similar results. Mm -hmm.